This is your pal Weezer Walter. This is Ugg Explode Podcast number two for Friday, August 28th, 2009. You just heard one of my all time favorite bands, The Sweet, doing Ballroom Blitz live in Cologne, Germany, sometime in May 1976. Tonight I'm going to go see a sort of version of The Sweet play in Santa Cruz, California on the beach side. The only original member of the group right now is Steve Priest, who looks like a 300-pound panda about ready to keel over, and a few of his session hack buddy friends from L.A. who, judging from the YouTube clips of these guys playing, hit a lot of clinkers, so it should be unintentionally funny. Um, Am I laughing at the sweep? Well, I probably will be, but the band's music over the years has given me so much enjoyment there's there's a duality here. It's not pure sardonicism. I actually think they were one of the best rock bands of all time. However, they were actually spinal tap when it comes down to it. They seem to go through all of the blunders and mishaps and delusions that uh, the fictional group went through in real life. So there is sort of a tragic comedy element to the suite and a bit of uh, cynicism when it comes to my 
extreme love for this one. I'll report back and tell you how the show was after I go to it. In the background, you're hearing a mix from a piece from my upcoming Lisa Walter Septet LP, Invasion, which will be out on Ugg Explode Records around January. Um, it features people like Vinny Golia, John Lindbergh, Liz Albee, Damon Smith, Lily Winant, and myself, and the guitar player Henry Kaiser, who I've worked with a lot for the last few years. Henry was a guy whose records I grew up listening to, and it's a real pleasure to be uh, friends with him and to play music with him very often. We just put out a trio record called Plane Crash with uh, Damon Smith on bass a few months ago, and I'm real proud of that. It's some hellish music. It's probably the most extreme thing Henry's ever played on, so I'm real proud of that. In the meantime, let's hear an old track from Henry Kaiser with the Japanese trumpet player Toshinori Kondo. This is from the album Protocol.
That last track was a rare one by Ornette Coleman from a 7-inch that was released on Impulse Records in 1969. The track was called Growing Up. I'll play the other side of the single later on in the set. And before that was classic Finnish black metal band Impaled Nazarene with Ghost Perversion from their great debut album Tall Corn Nords Nords Nords. Next up is a track called Electric Torture by the Canadian thrash band Razor from their album Violent Restitution. I'm getting ready to ignite I carry weapons 
That last cut is an excerpt from the track Red from my recently released album with tenor saxophonist Mike Forbes and bass player Andrew Scott Young. The record's called American Free and it's on Ugg Explode Records out now. It's a vinyl only release for you people who like big pieces of plastic. Um, if you want to hear the rest of that album for free as a preview mp3 you can download that for free from www.ugexplode.com u-g-explode u-g-e-x-p-l-o-d-e ugexplode and if you like it you should buy the record because I'm about $600 in the hole on it and uh, I'd appreciate getting my money back thank you very much alright coming up next is the title track off of Immortals Amazing 1995 release Battles in the North.
That was Globe Unity Orchestra with The Forge from their 1979 album on Japo Records called Compositions. Globe Unity started in the late 60s and it's a big band of primarily European improvisers led by the piano player Alexander von Schlippenbach. Uh, One of the featured players on that track is the massive tenor saxophone innovator Evan Parker. Check them out. All their stuff's good. They're really wild. That's uh, the more composed side of the band. Uh, early on, they would do a lot of totally freeform freakouts, and they're they're really good. Before that, we had Battles in the North by Immortal, one of my all-time favorite records. There's something so bizarre and mutated about it. The dry production, the spazzy drums. I love it. I will never stop listening to that record as long as I live. Uh, what's going on with me right now? I don't know, I'm feeling a little blasé. The current music scene is seeming a little dull to me. People seem to have a lot of concepts, but they're not really bearing them out too well. So, I'm finding a lot of bands to just be okay right now. And okay is not good enough, especially now that we have the entire history of music available to be downloaded into our fingertips in a matter of seconds. I don't know, what am I saying? I'm still striving to do something that is pushing music further, and I wish more people were doing that right now, especially rock bands, because I don't see a lot of rock bands that are very interesting right now. So that's a challenge to everybody out there who's in a rock band. Try harder. Make something more interesting. Do something that hasn't been done before, because if it's already been done, we're listening to it already. All of us are listening to it already. We need new music. I have a new rock band in the works. I'm not going to talk about it, though. It's top secret. But it's going to happen, and it's going to be something really fucked up. So look forward to that. Or don't. Or maybe you'll hate it. (laughs) Good. I hope you don't think it's just okay. That, that That would suck. Moving right along here. A contemporary group I actually think is very interesting is the duo People. That's Mary Halverson, the great guitar player, and Kevin Shea, the nutty, wacky drummer. Um, they, I saw them live a few years ago. Uh, I was playing on a bill with them, and I just loved what they did because it was so dry. Well, Mary was very dry, and Kevin was very wet, and he wouldn't shut up between songs, and he was being really annoying. I kind of find them to be some sort of mutant hybrid between Joni Mitchell and early U.S. Maple. You figure it out, decide for yourself. All I know is they split that crowd in half. Half of them hated it, half of them loved it. And if a band can do that, they might be onto something. And I'll let you decide. This is people.
Ornette Coleman from 1969, a song called Man on the Moon, which is the A-side of a 7-inch released on Impulse Records. Before that, you heard the Dills and their ditty I Hate the Rich. That was from a bootleg recorded live in Portland, Oregon on April 13, 1978. And before that, you heard the band People with their song, the Evergreens cover A Beautiful Day Lost a Reflection from their CD, Misbegotten Man. Great stuff. Okay, I don't have so much to talk about today. I've just been sitting in my house mixing records, and uh, I'm a little dull right now. Hopefully going to the Sweet concert tonight will kick some life back in me because things are a little dull. I'm trying to work on my double kick technique right now because I have some shortcomings that I've always had that I'm trying to overcome. And I realized that the only way to do this is to put in a lot of quality time. So between mixing records, I play double kick drums. So that's my whole life right now. Very glamorous, as you would expect. Moving right along, here's a track from Siege called Cold War.
That tender little ditty was a song I recorded in uh, 2003 for a compilation, and it's called Shaking Hands and Kissing Babies Covered in Bacteria. Now, that's not my title. The idea behind the compilation was that the person who put the compilation out wanted to create song titles for artists and have them write music to his titles. I thought the title wasn't very good. In fact, I thought it was insipid and stupid and sophomoric. Uh, no offense to uh, the person, but it, it didn't really strike me as being very interesting. So I got it in my head that I wanted to do sort of a Little River Band kind of vibe with the music, and it's about a, a satanic bartender who thinks that one of his customers is a Christian, so he, so he murders him and then has sort of like uh, insane schizophrenic delusions after that. Yeah, so sometimes I write music like that, and I, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to wrap things up here. Uh, I promise there will be more bells and whistles in the uh, next few weeks as I get more excited about other people's music. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with a long excerpt from a piece by Masayuki Takianagi, the Japanese guitar player. This is from a 1975 album called April is the Cruelest Month, and this is a song he calls My Friend Blood Shaking My Heart. Thanks for coming. You can always find out more information about my stuff and my related projects at www.ugexplode.com. My name is Weasel Walter. I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Thanks.